Chapter 6, Moaning Joanne's Spirit Animal As the weeks passed, winter ended and spring began. News about Sirius Black stopped coming and most people started to forget about him. They assumed he had left the country to stay out of Azkaban and that he wouldn't cause any more trouble. Things were back to normal, and Harry was able to completely focus on becoming a great wizard and superhero. On a warm Saturday morning as Ron and Harry were waking up, Harry realized something. You know who we haven't seen in a while? Professor McGonagall in human form, Ron suggested. Yes, but no. I meant Moaning Joanne. We should go see her. She's probably been lonely. They quickly got ready and went to the common room to get Hermione. Harry continued to walk through the common room as he explained. We're going to see Moaning Joanne. Hermione promptly closed her book and followed them. Hedwig flew beside them and Rock was securely in Harry's pocket, an idea he had thought of when he spent time with Rue and his kangaroo friends in Australia. Moaning Joanne began to cry as they entered the tiled room. Harry pretended not to notice her animosity and spoke to her anyway. We're gonna chill in here instead of the common room for a little while. Why? Joanne asked. We don't want you to be lonely, Ron explained. It was a rhetorical question. Why? A small and simple word to express all of my questions of this world. Why me? Why this? Why you? They had brought a few chairs in a while ago to set up a room for them to investigate Dudley's death. There was also a chalkboard and several other small things like pencils and chalk. They each took a seat and watched Moaning Joanne who was sitting on the floor next to the tunnel sink. Last year they found a secret tunnel in this bathroom and it has yet to be fixed. So I was thinking, Harry started as he stared at the ceiling. I wonder what our animal counterparts are. Do you mean your Patronuses? Moaning Joanne asked. No, I mean our spirit animals, Harry corrected. It's called a Patronus, Moaning Joanne said through gritted teeth. I don't think so, Harry replied. And you're not writing the story, are you? Moaning Joanne made the closest sound to a growl that a human could make. Grrr. Your spirit animal is definitely a dog, Harry announced. Nah, Ron disagreed. She's way more like a weasel. You're more like a weasel, Joanne jabbed. I'm a Weasley, not a weasel. If my spirit animal was a weasel, then that would be really corny. Ron Weasley the weasel? No one would take that story seriously. Now bathroom girl moaning Joanne the weasel. That works. Besides, I've already established that I'm a Jack Russell Terrier. I wonder what my spirit animal is, Harry said wistfully. A white dog named Crypto, Hermione suggested as Harry remembered she was with them. A stag. Your spirit animal is a stag, Moaning Joanne answered, clearly struggling to say the term spirit animal. Ew, those weird bug things? I hope I don't get stepped on, Harry said with his face scrunched. Moaning Joanne looked incredibly annoyed. That's a stag beetle. You're a stag. A deer. Wait, but this is a different world. Maybe here, you're the weasel. Joanne, Ron started. Just let it go. What would I be? Hermione asked to no one in particular. A raccoon, the burglar of animals, Ron smirked. An otter, Moaning Joanne answered without hesitation. An otter, Harry repeated. What, was that your favorite animal or something? What? No, I have many reasons for my decisions, Moaning Joanne retorted. What do you like so much about otters? Ron asked. The fact that they live near water or because you really like the name Musladay? Aren't otters really similar to weasels? Hermione asked. They are, Harry exclaimed. Your spirit animal is almost a weasel. Your spirit animal is definitely a weasel. Don't worry, Ron said insincerely. I could easily picture your spirit animal being a toilet. Moaning Joanne pouted until they changed the subject. After sifting through possible conversation starters, Ron remembered something. They've really done a good job of hiding from you, eh? He said, looking at Hermione. Who? Hermione asked. Your family. Oh yeah, them. You have family at Hogwarts? Harry asked. No, you don't. Moaning Joanne answered in disgust. Closest thing you have to another relative besides your parents is a scrapped idea. Hermione sighed. I don't like talking about them, but fine. I have four cousins who go to Hogwarts. Another one graduated last year. They're all Ravenclaws. What? Moaning Joanne asked in confusion. No one hesitated to ignore her, and they instead asked their own questions. Why didn't you tell us about them sooner? Harry asked, feeling as though he'd missed out on something. Because they're crazy! Hermione exclaimed. They don't believe in first names. I had to name myself when I was four. Is that why your name is so weird? Ron asked. Then I renamed myself when I was nine. You think my name is weird? Well, your name is Mud, Harry reminded. You gave me that name, Hermione snapped. I did? Harry asked. Wow, I'm really creative. I should write a book, perhaps about my life. No! Moaning Joanne screamed. 
I would be a great author, Harry said, taking offense. As if you would know anything about writing. Moaning Joanne stared at him, breathing like a hungry tiger. Anyway, Hermione said slowly, no one in my family has a first name. Using only surnames is not descriptive enough, especially in families. It's mental. So your parents would only go by Mr. and Mrs. Granger as opposed to having given names? Ron asked. Hermione nodded while Harry looked suspicious. Sounds more like lazy writing to me. To me it sounds like continued lazy writing, Moaning Joanne jabbed. Ha ha, Harry exclaimed. But for it to be continued, it would have had to be lazy in the first place. Moaning Joanne looked offended for some reason and Hermione kept talking. I told them I'd curse them if they bothered me. Harry gasped. That's horrible! Before he could educate Hermione about the importance of family, he was distracted by something on the floor. Hey look, a book! He said as he picked up a book that said Tom Marvolo Riddle. Moaning Joanne rolled to her knees and pointed. There's something off about that book. It just absorbs the ink like magic! We've already seen this diary, Ron said. It's obviously a forgery. Nice try, Moaning Joanne, but we're not going into another creepy dark tunnel. He took the book from Harry. Nothing else to do besides chuck it. Let's all throw books at Joanne because she can feel it. Ten points if you can get it through her stomach, fifty points if it goes through her head. I'll go first. Moaning Joanne squeaked and locked herself in one of the bathroom stalls. Ah, uh, I was only joking, Ron said before walking to the door. The following day, Harry, Hermione, and Ron were sitting in the common room when Hedwig came to deliver a letter to Harry. Dear Harry Potter, please come visit me in my bathroom today as soon as possible. Sincerely, Moaning Joanne, Harry read. I didn't know Moaning Joanne could send letters. Sounds shady. I don't trust her, Ron said. I agree. You aren't exactly on good terms, Hermione said. At all. I can't ignore it. I'll keep getting more until I'm buried in letters. Trust me, it's not a good idea. They followed Harry to Moaning Joanne's bathroom and walked in. Hey, MJ, Harry greeted. What's up? Harry, I'm so glad you came. I got this idea from a rumor a while back. Moaning Joanne knocked on one of the stalls and a Dementor walked out. Harry's eyes filled with panic and he started to bark. Hermione and Ron barked as they pulled Harry back and ran out the door. They ran for a long time and ended up outside. Harry looked back and noticed the Dementor wasn't following them anymore. They waited a few moments to catch their breath and then noticed a Quidditch match. They decided to stay and watch. They walked to the bleachers and sat down. It was a Gryffindor and Hufflepuff match and Gryffindor was losing miserably. From the people in front of them, they heard Gryffindor's Seeker hadn't bothered to show up for the game. That's a shame, Harry said to Ron and Hermione. If I was the Seeker, I would be there for my team. They sat watching the players run across the field on brooms. Harry Potter, someone said. Harry looked behind him. Oh, Dobby. Hi. Please don't kill me. Dobby tried to protect. Dobby sent Dementor to Hogsmeade to protect Harry Potter. Dobby has to try again. Dobby must protect Harry Potter. Dobby is sorry, not sorry. Another Dementor started charging at Harry. The three of them ran off as they barked. They ran as fast as they could to Hagrid's cabin. Thankfully, he answered the door quickly. Before he could say hello, they darted inside. He noticed the Dementor on his way and slammed the door shut. Blimey, another attack? Actually, it's the second today, Harry corrected. On the right side, we found out why. Hermione started. Dobby sent two Dementors and Moaning Joanne sent one. Sirius isn't after Harry. Probably. That's a relief, Hagrid said, but we're still looking for him. He's done a terrible thing since he escaped. What terrible thing? Ron asked. He hasn't killed anyone else, has he? Hermione asked. No, not yet. He's betrayed his dear friends. Hagrid shook his head in disapproval. Harry was worried about his parents. Dumbledore said they'd be fine, but what if he's wrong? Sirius Black is innocent, obviously. But what about Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon? They're the reason his parents are in danger. There was a knock at the door and Hagrid brought his crossbow to answer. He opened the door and saw a student who was carrying a small snake. Hagrid lowered his weapon and said hello. She held the snake out to Hagrid. I found a snake on the roof. What were you doing on the roof? Hagrid asked. She avoided the question and kept showing Hagrid the snake. Can you take this snake? I don't handle snakes. Head to Slytherin. The snake people will be happy to have him. She took the snake and scurried off in the direction of the castle. Hagrid closed the door and walked back to Hermione, Harry, and Ron. If I did handle snakes, I wouldn't have escaped last year. You know how they escaped? Ron asked. Snape tried to keep it quiet, but he didn't notice Tom Riddle moving the snakes upstairs. Months later, he didn't notice Riddle taking another snake and setting it loose. Luckily, one of his students caught Riddle moving the second basilisk. Several kids ran around Hogwarts looking for the snake and brought it back to their dungeons, Hagrid explained. 